once upon a time, approximately two and a half thousand years ago, there were three Greek poets called John, Colin and Simonides. And they were sitting in the pub feeling very sorry for themselves. John, for instance, was trying to write a poem and had spent the last three weeks trying to think of something that rhymed with orange. Colin was feeling quite sorry for himself because he hadn't got a job and the employment prospects for unemployed poets was actually quite bad. But it was Simonides that had got it worst because he, for the third year running, had forgotten his wife's birthday and he'd been banned from the house for a week until next Tuesday. And so the three of them were sitting gloomily, contemplating their pints, feeling very sorry for themselves indeed. By the end of the evening, John and Colin decided to go off with a few of the lads and have an all-night game of civilization. But Simonides decided to stay in the pub and deeply contemplate why it was that he could remember 256 stanzas, but he couldn't remember his wife's birthday. And then, four pints of John Smith's later, he got it. Eureka! he shouted to an empty pub in general. I've got it. I know how to remember things better. And indeed he had. Simonides went off to set up the ancient art of memory and is still to this age remembered by those of us who do have a good memory as the founding father of the mnemonic device. And today we're going to look at one of those mnemonic devices, specifically how you can use the art of storytelling to remember things better. If you haven't already realised, some things are much more difficult to remember than others. We're very good at remembering visual things, we're good at remembering emotions, we're good at remembering feelings, but we're not very good at remembering abstract concepts like names, dates, formula, this sort of thing then anything that you can do to connect what it is that you're trying to remember with something that's very visual and that preferably makes you feel a certain emotion is a very good thing because you're much more likely to remember it. If, for instance, I gave you a dozen words and asked you to remember Hydra, Zeppelin, Battery, Blueberry, Boredom, Car, Night, octopus, toothpaste, sign, soda, magnet. Even after just a few minutes, it's quite likely that you'd have forgotten most of them. And so there are several things that you can do to help you remember the names of things in a much better way. The first thing to do would be to try and visualize each one of these things. So instead of just saying the words, Hydra, Zeppelin, Battery, you actually think what each one might look like. Instead of Hydra, you have Hydra. Instead of Zeppelin, you have Zeppelin. And Battery, Blueberry. And Boredom, Car, Night, Octopus, Toothpaste, sign, soda, and magnet. But if we can take those visual images and connect them together to make some sort of story, then your chance of remembering them is even better. Because we naturally remember how things are connected to each other. It's something that we do very well. What sort of thing are we talking about? Well, this is the story of the Hungry Hydra who wanted a hamburger. Once upon a time, Harry the Hydra was feeling very hungry, especially considering how many mouths he had to feed. So he decided that he would travel into town. He got on his Zeppelin, which wasn't just any ordinary Zeppelin, it was one of these modern double-barreled Zeppelins. And he tried to get it to go up into the air and off into town. But the problem was that the batteries were flat. The Zeppelin needed three big batteries to get it to work. But fortunately, these batteries were special eco-friendly batteries that ran on blueberry juice. And all he had to do was go off into the forest and find as many blueberries as possible. 
Not just any blueberries, however. The blueberries were the most efficient for the battery, were actually square blueberries. So off Harry ran into the forest to find some square blueberries. But after searching for five hours, he couldn't find anything. He was extremely bored. He sat there twiddling all his thumbs. Suddenly a big car pulled up. It was huge. It had got six wheels and he was driven by this knight in shining armor, whose name was Sunday. And Sunday Knight rolled down his window and said, hello, Harry, where are you off to? And Harry the Hydra said, well, I'd like to go into town to get something to eat. And the knight said, well, I might be able to help you if you can get hold of this octopus on the back seat and give him a good squeeze. So Harry gets hold of the octopus, pulls him out of the car, there's tentacles going all over the place. He gets the, the octopus and he squeezes him. And as he squeezes him, at the top of his head comes all this toothpaste, loads and loads of toothpaste. And he, can, he starts writing, he can write with this jet of toothpaste that's coming out of the octopus. He starts writing on the floor. He, he draws all these nines. Nine, 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 nine. Then suddenly there's this big rumble and then up from the ground, all, through all the leaves and toothpaste that's lying everywhere, this big building suddenly comes up with a door. And above the door, there's this, this big neon sign that just says X. So Harry the Hydra throws the octopus away goes up to the door, and as he opens the door, the first thing is he can smell the wonderful smell of hamburgers being cooked. He says, yes, this is where I want to get. But before he can go in to get his hamburgers, Harry sees that there are two guards just inside the door, but they're not normal guards, they're the shape of soda siphons. And these guards, or soda siphons, squirt water into his face and, and push him back and push him back and he can't get into the building to have his hamburgers. He puts his hand in his pocket and he discovers that he's got this big magnet and it's a special hamburger magnet and without having to go in he can point his magnet and one, two, three, a dozen hamburgers whip past the soda siphon guards and he's managed to get 12 hamburgers on his magnet that he can eat and keep himself happy. Yes, it's a stupid story. But the question is, does that story help you remember the 12 words more effectively? We start off with the first one, Hydra, who then gets into a Zeppelin that's powered by three batteries, but they're ecological batteries that run on the juice of blueberries. But then Harry stops looking for blueberries because he gets bored. And then, as he's waiting, there comes a car, a six-wheeled car, that's driven by a knight. And the knight has a problem because he's got an octopus. And when Harry squeezes the octopus, out of the head comes a load of toothpaste, which he uses to write a load of number nines on the ground, which causes a building to come up. And on the front of the building, above the door, there is a sign. When he goes in through the door, there are two soda siphons standing guard, but he manages to get his hamburgers by using a magnet. Now, how many of those were you able to remember? Hopefully, it should be most of them. But these 12 words aren't just any 12 words. You may or may not have noticed that these 12 words actually represent the first 12 chemical elements of the periodic table. Hydra sounds a bit like hydrogen, our first element, that has the atomic number one. Zeppelins are full of helium, and the double-barreled Zeppelin reminds us that its atomic number is two. Batteries are often made of lithium these days, and our three giant batteries remind us that its atomic number is three. The word berry reminds us of the word beryllium and the square berries remind us that beryllium's atomic number is four. Boredom sounds a bit like boron and when Harry got bored after five hours of searching that reminds us 
that the atomic number of boron is 5. Car can remind us of carbon, and the six-wheeled car reminds us that carbon's atomic number is 6. Night reminds us of nitrogen, and Sunday night is the seventh night of the week, which reminds us that the atomic number of nitrogen is 7. Octopus can remind us of oxygen, and just as an octopus has eight tentacles, the atomic number of oxygen is 8. Toothpaste has fluoride, and fluoride sounds a bit like fluorine. And when you use the toothpaste to write the number 9, then that reminds us that fluorine's atomic number is 9. The big neon sign in the shape of a cross can help us remember that the atomic number of neon is 10. Soda siphon can make us think of the element sodium, and two together can remind us that the atomic number of sodium is 11. And magnet can remind us of magnesium. And the 12 hamburgers that got stuck on the magnet can remind us that the atomic number of magnesium is 12. And of course you can continue. If you wanted, the hamburgers could be wrapped in aluminium foil. Number 13 of the periodic table is aluminium, etc, etc, etc. But the point is that even if your story is pretty nonsensical and ridiculous, it still helps you to connect random names, random pieces of information put together into a list. So the next time that you have to remember the elements of the periodic table or a set of names of kings and queens or the countries of the world or even capital cities, then try connecting them together in a silly story that you can visualize and hopefully that will help you to remember them better. And that is what being a better learner is all about. My name is Ian Gibbs. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.